No, that is exactly where I would suggest that literature review that some of our, um, at least in my group, uh, those who have done, has uh, uh, been something that could be really uh, go going in depth and could be differing. Do you feel that Ankita and all some of the star students who are with us also have not gone beyond listing the literature? It is not listing, it is not literature presentation, it is literature review. Why review? Because they say something and you say something. Both have to be coming there. The literature says something and you connect that to the other literature which is related to that concept, which means there is a lot of reflection and thinking that is expected of you. That is why it is called review. And how do you do that thinking and reflection? One is in terms of scope, depth, location, method, style. It is like sometimes you may have to quote from that literature. People are saying some Devendra Shah said this. His uh, or uh, the work of that person is talked about. But you do not say in which page number. What exactly is the quotation that is pertinent there? From which page it is coming? What is the overall concern of that book? Because when you give the overall concern and within that when you pick this quotation, you also know the standpoint of the author. Like I was guiding a thesis on surrogacy. The student was talking about a host of literature ranging from statutory developments to the reflections on surrogacy as an institution, the types of surrogacy, etc. So she was able to fix the different layers of the concept. But then what she was going to say was how such institution is occurring in India because her study was located in India, again location issue. How surrogacy was treated within the law she was looking at. So collect all the literature. You look at the overview first and then you start rearranging it in a diagrammatic way in your mind or you try to connect. Again and again you read, some four or five times you read, you start seeing a relationship within the literature. And do you remember what I told diagrammatically, inverse pyramid method? You remember that? So when you make an inverse pyramid, you know inverse pyramid is, you can, you can just imagine a pyramid which is inverted. Inverse pyramid is from general to the specific. So generally what your concept has, each of those areas you subsplit and read and try to connect them and then narrow down. When you narrow down, you are narrowing it down in terms of location, in terms of the style, in terms of the methodology that you are going to adopt and then there, you, when you are narrowing down, you are narrowing down in terms of four to five questions which arise in your mind as you are doing the review of the literature that you have chosen. So the quality parameters, the inverse pyramid and then the uh, idea of contemporaneity, relevance, variety of literature, all these you keep in mind and review what you have written. You did not bring today, does not matter, but please go through this checklist. Is my literature really reviewed? Is my way of writing the review? giving a feeling to the reader that it is a thoroughly done review of the knowledge which is available in the field. That is the first point. Second is, one is thoroughness. Second is that thoroughness leading to certain sub-questions and the sub-questions establishing the gaps in the knowledge that you have travelled through. You have to establish a gap. That gap is establishing the need for your research. There is a need for uh, uh, looking at this in depth or there is a need for applying this research in the Indian context or there is a there is no study found in despite this much of literature review of the one which is comparing the position in India and Mongolia or looking at the application of these global standards to the particular situation of Iran let us say. So they are the last 10 years of political changes which a country has gone through and the policy that the nation has adopted has also been experienced let us say by Malaysia but then there has not been a comparison of the two. So when you are analyzing this gap and when you are establishing a need for a new study somehow let it be as objective as possible. Most of the time students tend to write this is very very relevant to this study. This is very, very, they, relevant is not my problem, but I am having problems with this expression that this is very useful to this researcher. No, 
you are not thinking of usefulness at that stage. Uh, uh, every bit of book or resource that you gather which provides information pertinent to your plausible research question is the data, but which is providing information pertinent to establishing the relevance of your research or need for your research is the literature. Do you get that? So, literature serves as the background, data serve as part of the research. Let us say there is a set of edited articles written by different authors in a book which is an edited version with three different parts. In that book definitely you will see information which forms part of the literature and also part of the data. It is not that one book only serves as literature. Is that clear? Yeah. So, think of the time frame in which you are studying. Be very clear about the political, commercial, industrial, cultural, historical context of your topic because law does not hang in suspension. It is not an independent discipline. It's, it has a very strong rooting in socio-economic and political happenings. So, try to understand the context of your topic and without that context if you are trying to establish law as simply a byproduct of regulations, legislations and case laws, you might end up committing the error of establishing a topic which is already much studied and not, does not have much of a scope for research. Sometimes it may happen you have chosen a topic and as you do the literature review, everybody has written everything about it, there is not much for you to write. You go to your theoretical and other discipline studies and you establish a theory and from that theory point of view analyze this law. It is called grounded theory approach or qualitative analysis. So, th for that again wider reading beyond the law you may have to do or you simply arrange the review that uh, you have seen and then you establish a need for a descriptive study that somebody has studied this phenomenon but has done only half a page of treatment in this book or in this article. Nobody has compared this with the Indian situation or Indian and the other similar legal system situation. So, the researcher derives the need for a new study, exhaustive or comprehensive study. So, like that your literature review should run. I will give you the samples of some of the uh, classic literature review. I will not go by uh, senior studies like the PhD study. I will just show you uh, the study which one of our star students did on surrogacy in India, little bit outdated in terms of current developments in surrogacy in India, but at that time how it was. See how she writes. She first sets her vision about this research. She says the end result of this research has thrown light on a new corner need for regulating surrogacy in India. To achieve the same the researcher has scrutinized many of the existing published works of the Indian as well as foreign authors pertaining to this research topic. Also made an analysis of case laws and legislation. So, she gives an introduction of why and what of her literature review. Then she says some reference books etc. whatever she has shown and then she says suddenly she jumps into the topic, the transition which you form in your review. No single area of medicine promises more acrimonious and intense debate in the coming decades than the implication of new medical technologies on maternal fetal relationships. Then she talks about an author in the book highlights the traditional form of surrogacy. So, instead of saying that author says this, she brings that author's reflections to that contact point of the topic itself. And then she continues, then she says, while Robert Blank has given a comprehensive coverage of legal and social issues raised as a result of both emerging technologies, etc., the researcher is mainly concerned with the chapter 5 of this book, where the author, again, she brings it. Okay. Now, she dwells on these details and then she goes to another author. She says that Cook and Scal uh, the latter in their book have highlighted the common themes that characterize debates across the countries like see she does not say this book says this and she, she uh, evolves the traveling of the topic the journey of the concept across the works and in the same year another author has uh, in the heart article given an analysis of legal models developed via case laws. So, she travels uh, through the concept then she comes to the law and how the law has been commented upon. Do you see this the logical framework of this uh, 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 literature review and then she after that she dwells clearly on 
surrogate motherhood raises difficult ethical, philosophical and social issues. And there she gives the uh, collection of articles by an author and she says how each author says this. She gives quotation, annotations from these works. And she arranges these annotations one by one in that work and then she says, a more and more, as more and more people turn to assisted reproduction, legal issues surrounding it have become increasingly complex. She traces the evolution of the law through the evolution of the concept, mingles the two. And thereby, she comes, the above literature shows that there is a depth, a dearth of foreign publication on surrogacy, but in India, there are hardly any books. Further, as a recent development in India, there is not much study in this area because surrogacy is a recent development. So you will have to show how this development is recent and therefore how legal research is recent or lacking or inadequate. So always we address inadequacy or outdatedness of the law. Similarly, the literature that you travel through also must establish that kind of absence or inadequacy in terms of uh, study or literature. So then she says, uh, that she, go, she has gone through these regulations and thereafter she has drawn up these objectives and research questions framing uh, and hypothesis, she used the hypothesis, hypothesis forming the basis of such a study. Now this we will be giving it to you in groups and then, uh, yeah that's about it. Then we had one more research uh, which uh, my student had done on ethical implications of stem cell research in India legal and ethical implications of stem cell research. She also, uh, after reviewing the aforementioned study, it's clear that despite the controversy that surrounds stem cells research today, there are many potential benefits. So she gives the benefits and disadvantages in stem cell research through the literature. Uh, the present researcher to a great extent in understanding the potential benefits, this research also helps at looking disadvantages. And then she says, the loophole that research came across in the study was that though the research was on the governmental policy, no concrete suggestion or framework to meet the shortcomings of the policy prevalent at that time was recommended by the researcher. How she say, uh, draws the flaws in that study? How many of you have done that in the literature that you have seen? Some you have done. Yeah, but then once again, I mean, first of all, establishing the quality of your research and secondly, establishing the quality of your review and then showing the journey of the review ending up in summing up these loopholes or gaps, knowledge gaps which exist and highlighting the need for your study and introducing your study thereafter on the basis of objectives and then on the basis of hypothesis or research questions. And these objectives and research questions reflected in your chapter title and each of the chapter giving in-depth treatment in the form of data, uh, either doctrinal or non-doctrinal data, forming a kind of analysis of these questions or objectives in the various chapters. And then providing a summation of your response to the objectives and questions or hypothesis in your conclusion chapter, along with suggestions for policy reforms or new law guideline for a new law or consideration or recommendation for reforms in future. So this is how the entire thesis should look like. Therefore, if literature review is not correct, nothing goes correct. And connect, some people do literature review as if it is hanging in suspension. That literature review should connect to your objective. How many of you have connected it to your objective and research question? You have done it? Yeah. But uh, once again, go through your literature review in terms of conforming to the quality criteria. Now, yeah, these, these points are uh, already we have uh, indirectly told. Uh, how do you do the review? One is similarities and dissimilarities in views of different authors. So always show on the same line or uh, at a different level or on a different note, a uh, different kind of opinion. So something like that you show the uh, similarities and dissimilarities, issues and areas information till that point and indicators for possibilities for the future study. So this is how your review analysis of literature should be looking like. Now a good review has to show how your study scope is established because of this, your study's relevance is established, how your study will be contributing to the knowledge, how do you justify the value and need for your study, 
evaluate whether the issues are known or not in the literature and then it also shows your it should establish your own ability competence and knowledge by looking at such a review that means you would have done 100 literature reading by now but if you don't pause it in your literature review as a as your teacher and as a third uh, as a third party evaluator when i send it to external examiner they will feel that you have done only this much review and you are arriving at a master's thesis with only so much of reading. Therefore, whatever you read, you please do not miss it. As soon as you read, you make a little summary. That is why we have different folders in our laptop and in that we have this literature and it is not simply collecting literature. When you read itself, you tick mark it and put it in a different font or colored font what the summary is and then you start reconnecting. So, there is a lot of thinking.